Lance Frazier played with the Baltimore Ravens in 04, with the Dallas Cowboys 04, 05, Seattle Seahawks 06, the Cologne Centurions in 2006, and with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, where he had a Hall of Fame career 2006 to 2012. Great Cup champion, CFL West All-Star. Now that I got him buttered all up, good morning, E. Lance. How are you? <laughs> Oh, my God. Did you, Ronnie P., did you just hit me with the Elance? Antonio <laughs> Fraser. I was reading right off your Wikipedia. Oh How you doing, my man? <laughs> Not bad, man. Just in, enjoying myself, trying to find, uh, you know, some normalcy in all of this this crap that we have, uh, you know, in the nation and, you know, here and, and abroad as well. Uh, man, I couldn't be better. Uh, I've gotten a little bit closer to, to my, my family. You know, we, we have discovered ourselves and reconnected. Connected, and uh, it's really been an awesome time. John Frenzy wanted to know where you're living. Can you give us an update on that? What's up in the world of Lance Fraser before we tell the football stories? So I, I am uh, in Newcastle, Delaware. Uh, I, I remember the first time I heard of Delaware, I thought it was somewhere in the Midwest, but it's uh, actually out east, uh, just nestled in between New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, and, and Maryland. Uh, I've been here... Uh, uh, pretty much um, since I left, you know, Saskatchewan for good. Uh, my family here, my wife, Kina, uh, my son, Kalen, and uh, uh, I'm in education. I did that uh, all, all throughout my career in the off seasons. Uh, I'm a director uh, in Pennsylvania and also a, uh, a football coach at Kennan High School as well. Um, just, just finished up here. Uh, there is a football coach, head football coach. Uh, we went 11 and two, uh, made it to the state playoffs, um, and we actually lost uh, in the uh, first round of the state playoffs. Advanced through the district playoff, uh, and it was a historic year for for the school and the program. Um, you know, a lot of firsts this past year. Playoff game, uh, our first playoff win, um, and then just having uh, the the city kind of kind of blow up a little bit. And uh, it kind of it's starting to feel like down south a bit, man. You know, the frenzy was kind of crazy. It was, it was uh, very uh, ready for football. And me and the staff uh, were very uh, happy to be able to provide that. One second, Lance. I just want to ask. Producer Clark, are we going to stay? You're, you're a little choppy on the video, Lance. Are we going to stay with this or you want to call him? Okay, we're going to try it for a little while longer, Lance. It's not terrible. It's just catching a little bit. Have you? Gotcha. Because you're involved with football now, um, you know, you're looking at the pandemic as a major headache. As far as your own career, are you glad you're retired now and not having to deal with the stuff that current players are going through? I mean, what's pandemic doing to the football world in your life right now? Uh, it's tough, man. We've we've had to kind of, just like education work, uh, we had to uh, evolve. Um, and that's what we've been doing. We had uh, We missed out on spring camp. This year, uh, you know, after, you know, you know, sp spring sports all together, I mean, I feel so bad for, for you know, those seniors uh, at all levels, high school through throughout. Uh, um, it just forced us to use, you know, these social media platforms a little bit better. Uh, these conference rooms, these virtual conference rooms a little bit better. Uh, we had to pivot to uh, an online uh, virtual spring camp where we had the kids, you know, do everything from their weightlifting. We took a survey of equipment at home. We did the weightlifting online. We did our uh, team meetings online, our installs, our individual meetings, uh, and then find them download a, uh, a fitness app, uh, a running app, and to to kind of um, you know keep keep track of their drill work that they were assigned for each day, and also their condition. I feel like we we're ahead of it. We we kind kind of feel like we're sort of shaping and then we also have the mental aspect of the game down pat you know, for what we want the kids to do. But like you know, Rod, unless you're doing the movements uh, as a team, uh, you're having that, that physical interaction, you know, coach to player, player to player, um, you know, you don't really have uh, – there's a lot of different ideas about what football is going to look like this year. Uh, it changes every, every day. So it's frustrating as a coach. And, you know, our main thing is we're uh, starting – Starting point is how do we keep the kids safe? How do we build a structure out from there? Uh, with that in mind, uh, we can't be selfish and excited about getting to the games. We need to make sure we take care of the business that we need to take care of to allow us to even get to that point. 
Um, Lance, one of my fa- <laughs> I've interviewed you many times, and one of my favorite answers of yours was how you compared being a Dallas Cowboy to a Saskatchewan Rough Rider, and you said it wasn't that different. Remember saying that and, and, and the reasons why? Can you uh, answer that again? Oh, I do. I mean, it's just the, the fandom, right, uh, and, and just the, uh, the, the appreciation – you know, for the team and, and the following and, and, you know, how well the team travels. Uh, and, you know, like in Dallas, uh, if you're a Dallas Cowboy, you're, you're, you're king, right? People appreciate you. Uh, they, they feel like they're a part of, you know, your family and then you, you theirs. Uh, so it, it is very much similar that way. And then just the game day experience, um, you know, you, you just really feel the vibe. You know, people are, people are present. Uh, people are, are riled up, and there, there's nothing like a, a a night game in old mosaic, right? Um, but you know what? I am kind of teed a bit with Dallas, man. It, it seems like, and this happened to me multiple times in my career, and I kind of feel this way with Saskatchewan to an extent. And, and follow me, guys. I'm not pissed off at you, but I've seen to miss every beautiful stadium upgrade <laughs> everywhere I've been. Like I, I leave Dallas, and and a year later, two years down the road, they get this nice, beautiful facility. I leave Saskatchewan a few years later, they get this nice, beautiful facility that I, I need to come up there and see. By the way, um, but yeah, man, I, I mean the upgrades look wonderful there. I, I know the electricity is is even higher now uh, at the new Mosaic. Um, I, I just I, I couldn't be more uh, pleased, and and also you know, prideful about, you know, what you guys have, have developed into uh, as a franchise and, and as a city. Well, Lance, uh, by the way, the same designer designed both stadiums, AT&T Stadium and Mosaic Stadium. So there's that, too. You need to talk to your fellows Go more figure. because the guys that I talk to all say, <laughs> we built that place. So you, you're part yeah, absolutely, of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 how we feel. Like exactly, uh, we we got the, the the pendulum swinging the right way, man. And um, you know that's that's our home as well. well we're going to have the Grey Cup here for sure. I think in two years, Lance, you're going to come up for that. I, I'm sure you are. Aren't you going to see the new stadium? I tell you what, I need to. I have I have some of my uh, local buddies that are still in Saskatchewan and uh, uh, lifers, Saskatchewan lifers as well that that have been you know kind of grinding me a bit to get myself up there. Um, they're pretty upset with me. It's like, dude, like, when are you going to come back? Like you leave and, and you never come back. Like you're the one guy, uh, we expected to be here often. And, you know, it, it's just so tough to be honest with you, uh, with me coaching ball. Now, uh, the seasons, uh, kind of go on simultaneously. Um, and, and then, you know, the preparation as a head coach is a lot different. Um, and you know, it, it gives me an appreciation for the coaches that I've had in the past, but it's kind of always in a way I, I finally got a chance to go back to West Virginia to see a football game after so many years, uh, just this past November, um, I, I was able to squeeze it in. So it, it does kind of handicap me a bit. It kind of it kind of keeps me from doing some of those things that that I miss doing. Uh, by the way, a Stampeder fan writes in and says, "Can you come play for the Stamps? Then we'll get a new stadium." So think about that. <laughs> You're the charm. <laughs> okay, Lance. They want to know your best 07 Grey Cup run story. What comes to mind? <laughs> oh man. Uh... There's so many, and it's it's a, it's a blur, really. Um, 07, what could I say about 07? I remember, and it's not it's not a funny story. I just really remember uh, everything about that run. You know, the start that we had, I remember, you know, us kind of stumbling a bit. Uh, I, I remember, you know, just, just the effect that Ken Austin had. Uh, and, and him being the only guy that could in the room that could really speak to what winning a Grey Cup in Saskatchewan was like. Um, it, it started off rough, but you knew something was special about that guy and kind of what he brought to the table in his experience. Um, he just really spearheaded, you know, the progression of that season and, and the belief uh, that we had in, in getting it done. And, you know, we, we had a bunch of, Guys from all over. Eric Tillman was, you know, finally putting his stamp on the team, uh, replacing uh, Roy Shivers, and you know, just the collection of guys. You know, you talk about the Tads of the world. Um, him, him, you know, locating him and pulling him from Hamilton. Uh, him, you know, getting myself from 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 you know the states. Uh, uh, Kerry Joseph coming over uh, from his times with with you know uh, Eric. I guess when he played with the Renegades. 
Um, it, it's just a bunch of different stories that that you have from guys from all over that really tied that that team together, um, and, and and really was a glue. Like it, it was unbelievable run. Me for myself, just being able to you know experience what I've always dreamed of as a kid, which was playing in the Super Bowl, to be able to get that in a in a Grey Cup in Canada. Uh, you know, to take my family through that process, you know, my now wife, uh, my son, Kaylin at the time, and then my mother, just to have my mother up in Toronto uh, for her, you know, she's from Florida. I'm from Florida. It was freezing to her. She thought she was going to die, <laughs> you know, and, and just the only thing that made her feel better about it was the scope of what we were getting ready to accomplish. And, you know, her, you know, ride through it, riding through the ups and downs with me throughout my career. For her to be able to watch her her son, uh, you know, have that experience and 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 then to win it, and then to see the after effects, you know, in the city, you know, the the, the team party afterwards and all of that uh, was really probably the the biggest highlight of that year. Seeing my mother, uh, uh, you know, and, and my 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 now family kind of go through that. Well, I'll tell you what, I would think the next time you're back here will be a Plaza of Honor Hall of Fame induction. Or, 20, or the Grey Cup, whichever comes first. Lance, we're completely out of time at the top of the hour. It's great catching up with you. Stay in touch, my man. We talk about you often up here. All great things. Glad to see things are going well. Hey, man, thanks for having me, man. Thanks, Appreciate Lance. it. The great Lance Frazier uh, joining us today from Delaware. We're out of time for hour one. Friends, you want to stick with us for a bit uh, coming back in hour two? Yeah, it's funny that. he says how cold it was. That ain't cold. <laughs> It was minus 20. I remember that. I, I wiped out on ice in downtown Toronto and took the knee out of my suit pant. But we've had colder. Yeah, yeah. Minus 20 is T-shirt weather. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, right. uh, next hour, Brandon London, Super Bowl champ, Grey Cup champ turned TV star. And S.J. Green, he of the greatest catch in CFL history, I feel. And more with John Frenzy. It's the RP Show, Game Plus TV Network, and listen live on rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.